Hi, I'm Eric Clapton. My associate is B.B. King. Welcome to Iron Horse Garage. So you probably hear a rooster crowing in about all of our videos. I want to show you the culprit. What you thinking there, Junior? Hey, Junior. Hey, Junior. Junior. Oh, hello there, pig. Yeah? Junior. Is that good, Junior? Are you going to crow for us, Junior? You find some good food? Huh? You find some good food there, Junior? Are you going to find some good food there? Junior! Well, hello there. You're some pig. Junior! What the issue is here, we have this uh, center carrier. This is a 98 Chevy. That's what it's going in anyway. Uh, we already swapped out the, the ring gear. And here's the pinion gear. The problem is, we got to get these here bearings off. And we have multiple pullers, different styles, everything else. And uh, these babies aren't cutting it. So you can't get this sucker around the bearing to grip it enough with enough force to pull that sucker off. So I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to cut this uh, or pry this cage off. And then we'll make a small cut and the bearing race and you pop that baby with a chisel and it'll create a stress fracture in there and then you should be able to pry your bearing off here we go Once you uh, really get your bearings about you uh, and cut this down, you want to make sure you don't cut it too deep into that uh, into your shaft. You just leave a little bit of space there, and then you're going to hit that with a chisel and stretch fracture it. This whole thing is unbearingable. Oh, you just put your chisel directly into your cut like that. Head it straight down into the shaft.
because of high definition television, you can see that there is a stress fracture in the crack. I hope you can see that. If you can't see it, just believe me, it's there. Now you can take your clamshell holder, put it on the top of the bearing race, and before, this wouldn't have pulled it off because the darn thing is on there too tight. And you would have busted your clamshell way before you would have got that bearing off. But now that there's a fracture in the thing, it was actually loosening that race up there. trick is to put a socket in here, in this case I'm using a 1 8 and 1 8 inch socket and a piece of metal plate right on the top there. So I'm just trying to catch the edge of that without getting into the bearing race itself. That's why I've opted for the inch and 1 8. mistake and we uh, slightly nicked the chef so what you want to do in that case as long as it's not too bad is just take a piece of uh, sandpaper and uh, make sure you got no sharp edges on that baby when you put your other bearing back on and it's uh, simple as that Try not to over sand it, or you're gonna change the dimensions of the walls there, and then uh, it's not gonna hold your bearing properly. And that's why you only use a piece of sandpaper. You don't uh, get all carried away with sanding it. Just knocking down any sharp edges that could be possibly on there, that's it. Now, we're gonna repeat the process on that bearing right there. Now, it's lunchtime. Hey Duddy, guess where we're going? Duddy, eat your taco heart out. after my discount of 10 cents per gallon shopping at Albertsons. I didn't do that. Hi there, how are you? Can we get 100 tacos? Do you guys, do you guys ship tacos to Texas? Yes, we do. Yeah? You bet. <laughs> Duddy, just, you're in just, luck. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, so actually, I'll probably get, you guys got fish tacos? <laughs> Sorry, Daddy, we tried. You want some of the best tacos oh, in Nampa? Texas, tacos and this is right off Lakeshore, well, Highway 45. Uh, All right, you need a receipt on this one? Uh, yes. So uh, he says this is the best tacos in town. Is this true? It is true. You heard Welcome. it straight from his mouth. 
Uh, Come we'll, enjoy some tacos. What's your name? Salvador. Salvador. Thank you, Salvador. My name is William. So we got a uh, Iron Horse garage just down the road. So we work on cars and different things like that. Oh but, yeah, uh, great. So we've yeah. we've eaten down there a couple times, but uh, yeah. All right. Good stuff. Highly yeah. recommend this place. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sauce. So let's see what he's talking about. Chicken. It's on chicken. It's definitely warm. Pretty warm. Well, buddy. Good crazy. What a delicious meal. Come on down to Tacos El Zacadicano. Tacos, now just two dollars. Burritos, nine dollars. Pesadillas, seven dollars. Delicious. Baby's actually uh, coming off with the punch, so let's just keep it. Well, now she stopped. Let's get the puller. Lucky for me, I have a bearing puller. Here he is, Jason. That looks like an expensive bearing puller. <laughs> oh, what? Right Got it. And where can we pick up a bearing puller like that? I'll tell you where. Sexy men are us. You can have this one. How much? Free. <laughs> They sure go on a lot easier than they come off. The thing starts binding up on you, then uh, it's best to back off your press and look at what's going on because you could have something in there, maybe a burr or a reason that it doesn't want to go on. Other thing's bottomed out, right, Jason? It went all the way to the bottom. Every time. You can't find the bottom. Man, those things spin smooth as an underwear model's butt. The reason I ordered this is because it has a drain plug in it, which the originals do not. I can smell the newness. Here we have a housing, rear axle housing to a 2002 Chevrolet Suburban. I didn't need the housing, but I did need some parts out of it. You want to start on axle variants? I'm going to have William start on the axle bearings here. We've got some new Yukon axle bearings. They ought to be super turning. 
Nobody tells me what to do. This is the patient. This is where it died. So now we're gonna fix it in Jason's driveway and uh, put it all back together. Well, this is the ring gear that came out of this truck. As you can tell, it's uh, missing a few teeth. It's also uh, a little heavy. This ring gear reminds me of uh, how Aaron likes his women. Gotta remove these old seals here, axle seals. Jason was just whining about me using his new puller, so I'll probably do that. Let's try the puller. Babies are designed to go in there like that, and then they grab the inside. There you go. You'll also need these to install the new ones. Sometimes I whistle while I work. <laughs> what? Look, some of Aaron's girlfriend's teeth. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> babe, we can take you back to the dentist and get it put back on, maybe. Hey, I was wondering where those f***ers went, man, because I couldn't find them. Make sure you wipe all your uh, stuff out of here. Get it clean for your next bearing, the new bearing. These are Yukon bearings, obviously made in the USA, which is great. And when you put this baby in, I'm gonna tap that sucker in there and it shoulders right up against there. So it needs to be all the way up against that shoulder. Here we go. Got this uh, bearing and seal driver kit, and uh, you just screw this baby on this way. Apparently, this side you pound your bearings in with, apparently, and this side you pound your seals in with. I have not used one of these before, so this will be my first time I'm using this. Usually, I use a hammer and a punch. seated correctly all the way in and uh, kind of hear the bearing seating as you're driving it in there you can hear it shoulder up and uh, it changes the pitch of your poundage higher or lower higher or lower lower I would say lower higher I would say lower I don't know I would say lower these guys are not pitch perfect we know that this is the uh, seal and as you can tell, that only goes in one way. It's got a lip there, so that will catch on the outside there. That's to hold all your oil into your axle shaft tube. You always just kind of tap your 
that seal in to begin with and just get it started. Not too much, just to get it started. Got to go in even and square. How does that tool work? Worked just fine. And the pitch got lower as the seal shouldered up against the axle too. Repeat the process on the other side. Welcome to the bottom floor. I've used my custom made long punch to punch out the seal bearing and race for the back of the pinion there. And now I will be test fitting my pinion with my new bearing into my old race here to take some light measurements to make sure we're in spec. our uh, bearing races put into the center section I'm gonna tap this here pinion seal but first I got to take a phone call from my uh, best fan your boyfriend Arco Horton hello apparently what's going on I'm underneath of Jason's Chevy's truck rebuilding the rear end and everything, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, just keep me posted and we'll go from there. So. All right. Sounds good. Yep. Yep. Me too. Bye. What that guy say? Huh? Sounds like bullshit. Stick the pinion in the housing. We're going to slip it right through the housing and William can catch it on the other side. We have our yoke with the uh, little tool to hold the thing. I from prefer egg whites. Turning you, turning on you. And here we go. Jason's wife Amanda doesn't know he drinks those every day. GoPro, disengage. <laughs> Don't say that. GoPro, self destruct. We just learned that the GoPro camera is voice activated and it's pretty cool. GoPro, make me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! So now we're putting the nut on the end of the pinion to uh, pull everything together here. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Or you can say, mother beeping, beep, beep, son of a beep. Beeper to beep, beep, beep. Gosh darn beep. Oh wait a minute, gosh darn is not a customer.
GoPro stop. GoPro disengage. GoPro stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. Here it is, the next day. We're gonna get back under the truck and finish our job here. It got a little too windy yesterday and cold, so we gave it up. It's still windy and cold today, but we're gonna do it anyway. We'll have to seat pinion bearing, probably. And uh, in order to do that, you gotta have 10 rotational inch pounds, is that correct? Uh, no, we're going to actually we're going to go to 20 rotational inch pounds. 20 rotational inch pounds. That means that when that sucker free spins, it should have 20 inch pounds of resistance without the carrier being in there. Correct. So, in order to make that happen, you can hold that with a breaker bar, and we're going to use another breaker bar and or an impact gun and get our correct torque and then we'll be installing the carrier. Yay! Have this Harbor Freight Checker Quinn brand. It's uh, gonna tell us the inch pounds on this bad boy. We went a little far, but we opted for the Crush Washer Eliminator Kit, so it's not a problem. So we want to take a minute and talk about this ratchet. This is a Harbor Freight ratchet made out of composite, plastic, whatever you want to call it. As you can see, it has uh, had its fair share of abuse. Now, I read about these ratchets first in Peterson's and Four Wheel Off-Road Magazine. And there was guys standing on these things, removing the lug nuts and stuff like that. So we decided to give one a try. We've had this ratchet now for how long? I don't know, five years. Like five years. And the saying we've used hammers on, we've uh, stood on it, we've yeah, put I'll cheater bars on it, and uh, it might not be a high dollar fancy ratchet, but I'm telling you right now, this thing is tough. We're not endorsing Harbor Free tools. We're just stating a fact. Get you one. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. Bearing caps must be torqued to 60 foot pounds. It is mighty windy out here still, and uh, Aaron has purchased this bad to the bone wind screen made out of foam that we are testing on this GoPro as we speak. So if uh, this video is published and you can hear me loud and clear without wind interference, we know it worked great. Now I'm going to need to put in some shimmies. I'm gonna go one on this side, two on that side, I think. And uh, then we'll be good to go. I'm installing the side shims to what I think they should be and then we'll uh, check the backlash and see if I was right. It's all very technical mainly because I make up half of what I'm doing. Don't be afraid to attempt this at home folks. <laughs> if Jason can do it, so can you. That's true. 
A lot of people are scared of rebuilding a rear end. Jason loves tearing into rear ends. <laughs> the bigger the better. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Just do it. You gotta tap the shims in. Tapping the shim out of this thing. Is it the proper way to install the shims? I don't think so. Installing bearing caps now. Uh, I'm gonna need that torque wrench on the bench, the half inch torque wrench. It's set to 60 pounds. If you could grab that for me. If I'll not. be right back. Don't give it all the beans all at once. Hold on, hold on. This here is a checker gauge. Dial in here. What I said. The dial indicator, and we're going to check the backlash of the gears. So, as you can see, we're moving into seven thousandths, seven eight thousandths of backlash, which is perfecto. Hey, first try first try. So our backlash is supposed to be measured from six to ten thousandths. As I'm moving it here, I'm getting seven thousandths. So we are within spec there. Excuse me, I have a phone call. Is it Arco Horton? Nope, it's my wife. I got me some mustard, and I'm gonna use this mustard to check my pattern. We call this pattern mustard. Love me some pattern mustard. I like to go three teeth deep here. Three teeth deep. The only thing that's correct about that uh, whole thing is this stuff is going to check the pinion depth in your gear and just ensure that we are set properly on the uh, pinion. And if it's not, oops, that's bad because then we got to redo everything. Well, let's see how it looks. I'll be gosh darn. It's basically because I'm perfect. I'm a perfect human being and I do everything right the perfectly first time. As you guys can see here, 
is transferring the mustard right dead center where it's supposed to be. We have a perfect, perfect setup. That was an accident, not perfection, don't be fooled. I'm perfect. Now, we're gonna install the axles. Axle, go. Checking the torque on the ring gear. Because it was easier to do in here than it was on the table. I think that's going to conclude this video. The last thing to do is put all our brake stuff back on, put the differential cover on, fill it full of oil, and go down the road. No reason to show you guys all that, but if it blows up, we'll do another video on that and tell you all about it. We will. Camera off. GoPro, GoPro. stop recording. GoPro, stop recording.